Part Three of A Boy's Will by Robert Frost. This LibriVox recording is in the public domain. Part Three In Neglect. They leave us so to the way we took, as two in whom they were proved mistaken, that we sit sometimes in the wayside nook, with mischievous, vagrant, seraphic look, and try if we cannot feel forsaken. THE VANTAGE POINT If tired of trees I seek again mankind, well I know where to hie me, in the dawn, to a slope where the cattle keep the lawn. There amid lolling juniper reclined, myself unseen, I see in white defined far off the homes of men, and farther still the graves of men on an opposing hill, living or dead, whichever are to mind. And if by moon I have too much of these, I have but to turn on my arm, and lo, the sun-burned hillside sets my face aglow, my breathing shakes the bluet like a breeze. I smell the earth, I smell the bruised plant, I look into the crater of the ant. Mowing There was never a sound beside the wood but one, and that was my long scythe whispering to the ground. What was it, it whispered? I knew not well myself. Perhaps it was something about the heat of the sun, something, perhaps, about the lack of sound, and that was why it whispered and did not speak. It was no dream of the gift of idle hours, or easy gold at the hand of fay or elf. Anything more than the truth would have seemed too weak to the earnest love that laid the swale in rows not without feeble-pointed spikes of flowers, pale orchises, and scared a bright green snake. The fact is the sweetest dream that labor knows. My long scythe whispered and left the hay to make. GOING FOR WATER The well was dry beside the door, and so we went with pail and can across the fields behind the house to seek the brook if still it ran. Not loath to have excuse to go, because the autumn eve was fair, though chill, because the fields were ours, and by the brook our woods were there, we ran as if to meet the moon that slowly dawned behind the trees, the barren boughs without the leaves, without the birds, without the breeze. But once within the wood we paused like gnomes that hid us from the moon, ready to run to hiding new, with laughter when she found us soon. Each laid on other a staying hand, to listen ere we dared to look. And in the hush we joined to make we heard, we knew we heard, the brook. A note as from a single place, a slender tinkling fall that made now drops that floated on the pool, like pearls, and now a silver blade. REVELATION We make ourselves a place apart behind light words that tease and flout. But, oh, the agitated heart till someone find us really out! Tis pity if the case require, or so we say, that in the end we speak the literal to inspire the understanding of a friend. But so with all, from babes that play at hide-and-seek, to God afar, so all who hide too well away must speak and tell us where they are. THE TRIAL BY EXISTENCE Even the bravest that are slain shall not dissemble their surprise on waking to find valour reign even as on earth in paradise. And where they sought without the sword wide fields of asphodel for air, to find that the utmost reward of daring should be still to dare. The light of heaven falls whole and white, and is not shattered into dyes. The light for ever is morning light, the hills are verdured pasture-wise. The angel hosts with freshness go, and seek with laughter what to brave, and binding all is the hushed snow of the far distant breaking wave and from a cliff-top is proclaimed the gathering of the souls for birth, the trial by existence named, the obscuration upon earth, and the slant spirits trooping by, in streams and cross and counter-streams, can but give ear to that sweet cry for its suggestion of what dreams, 
and the more loitering are turned to view once more the sacrifice of those who for some good discerned will gladly give up paradise and a white shimmering concourse rolls toward the throne to witness there the speeding of devoted souls which god makes his especial care and none are taken but who will having first heard the life read out that opens earthward good and ill beyond the shadow of a doubt and very beautifully god limbs and tenderly life's little dream but naught extenuates or dims setting the thing that is supreme nor is there wanting in the press some spirit to stand simply forth heroic in its nakedness against the uttermost of earth the tale of earth's unhonored things sounds nobler there than neath the sun and the mind whirls and the heart sings and a shout greets the daring one but always god speaks at the end one thought in agony of strife the bravest would have by for friend the memory that he chose the life but the pure fate to which you go admits no memory of choice or the woe were not earthly woe to which you give the assenting voice and so the choice must be again but the last choice is still the same and the awe passes wonder then and a hush falls for all acclaim and god has taken a flower of gold and broken it and used therefrom the mystic link to bind and hold spirit to matter till death come tis of the essence of life here though we choose greatly still to lack the lasting memory at all clear that life has for us on the rack nothing but what we somehow chose thus are we wholly stripped of pride in the pain that has but one close bearing it crushed and mystified in equal sacrifice thus of old the douglas did he left his land as he was bid with the royal heart of robert the bruce in a golden case with a golden lid to carry the same to the holy land by which we see and understand that that was the place to carry a heart at loyalty and love's command and that was the case to carry it in the douglas had not far to win before he came to the land of spain where long a holy war had been against the too victorious moor and there his courage could not endure not to strike a blow for god before he made his errand sure and ever it was intended so that a man for god should strike a blow no matter the heart he has in charge for the holy land where hearts should go but when in battle the foe were met the douglas found him sore beset with only strength of the fighting arm for one more battle passage yet and that as vain to save the day as bring his body safe away only a signal deed to do and a last sounding word to say the heart he wore in a golden chain he swung and flung forth into the plain and followed it crying heart or death and fighting over it perished fain so may another do of right give a heart to the hopeless fight the more of right the more he loves so may another redouble might for a few swift gleams of the angry brand scorning greatly not to demand an equal sacrifice with his the heart he bore to the holy land the tuft of flowers i went to turn the grass once after one who mowed it in the dew before the sun the dew was gone that made his blade so keen before i came to view the levelled scene i looked for him behind an isle of trees i listened for his whetstone on the breeze but he had gone his way the grass all mown and i must be as he had been alone as all must be i said within my heart whether they work together or apart but as i said it swift there passed me by on noiseless wing a wildered butterfly seeking with memories grown dim or night some resting flower of yesterday's delight and once i marked his flight go round and round as where some flower lay withering on the ground and then he flew as far as i could see and then on tremulous wing came back to me i thought of questions that have no reply and would have turned to toss the grass to dry but he turned first and led my eye to look at a tall tuft of flowers beside a brook 
a leaping tongue of bloom the scythe had spared beside a reedy brook the scythe had bared i left my place to know them by their name finding them butterfly weed when i came the mower in the dew had loved them thus by leaving them to flourish not for us nor yet to draw one thought of ours to him but from sheer morning gladness at the brim the butterfly and i had lit upon nevertheless a message from the dawn that made me hear the wakening birds around and hear his long scythe whispering to the ground and feel a spirit kindred to my own so that henceforth i worked no more alone but glad with him i worked as with his aid and weary sought at noon with him the shade and dreaming as it were held brotherly speech with one whose thought i had not hoped to reach men work together i told him from the heart whether they work together or apart end of part 3 recording by bill borst